Hi there, this is Alana with Jamie, and you guys are listening to the Praying Christian Women podcast. How's stuff going, Jamie? Going well. How are you? Pretty good. Yeah, we're, we got some good news, at least in Alaska, in terms of like some of the restrictions easing up, a few more businesses opening up by the end of the week. That's pretty exciting. Yeah. It sounds like your dream of a massage might be a reality soon. I, know, I think they're allowing like extra, as long as it's like one patient, one patient, one customer per right. yeah. provider. Yeah, I'll still wait a little bit, you know, like I think in everybody's in the back of your mind, it's okay, well, things didn't get as bad. I think this is fact. Things didn't get as bad in many places as people feared. Alaska being one of those places where things didn't get as bad as people worried. And so then you have to ask yourself, well, was this an overreaction or was this as drastic as we needed to be? And it's a little hard to know. It is. I mean, I, I personally, my husband and I were talking about this, like, well, what happens if they decide to have spring hockey late? Are we going to do it? What's it going to look oh, like if we did uh-huh. that, if they do allow sports of certain numbers? Cause right now that's not yeah. on the table because it's right. an indoor sport. It's. Mm -hmm. You know, I think they're limiting it to 20 people or something when the social Mm -hmm. distancing guidelines have been eased, but Mm -hmm. you know, cause we do need to find out, are we, are we going to personally do the things that are being allowed or are we going to hold back as much as possible? Wait a little more. Yeah. Where are you guys falling on that? Or are you still kind of making up your minds? Uh, we're more on the cautious side. I mean, I, I tend to be a believer that our, you know, our governor surprised me by, closing schools for that extra time. And then as things mm-hmm. unfolded across the nation, I felt like we were so fortunate that he was so proactive mm-hmm. um, because I think that is one of the reasons that it probably didn't get worse than it could have been. But, you know, on, and I think they're going to be cautious about opening up. So I think as, I don't know, my, if it becomes uh, an issue, like if it, if it does, if they open up something that we're, thinking about being part of, I think we'll decide then and pray about it. Yeah. Yeah. But right at this moment, like if they were to just say, everything's open, we wouldn't do that. We would wait and Mm -hmm. see how Mm -hmm. the gradual opening is affecting cases. Right. I think that's, that's where we tend to err. Mm -hmm. How about you guys? That makes sense. Um, I'm probably a little more cautious than Scott is right now. You know, he's been the one who goes and gets the groceries and things, and I still get a little nervous about it. I do feel cautiously optimistic, for sure. Like, I really do hope that things can start opening up again and that we're not going to see a huge um, increase in cases and things like that. So that's kind of where I'm falling we haven't, yeah. you know, changed any of our plans as of right now, but like I, I know our puppy's going to need new shots at the vet before long. And, you know, I'm, I'm comfortable enough going ahead and scheduling that appointment and getting that mm-hmm. taken care of. And so, yeah, you know, just kind of slowly adding things back in as we're able. Yeah. Well, and as far as Alaska goes, I know a couple of the cruise lines actually just said, no, we're not, we're not having any cruises for the rest of the summer. Um, so a lot of the tourism industry, mm-hmm. even with things gradually opening within the state, right. the, a lot of the the big tourism that would be bringing people in from other parts of the country are are not doing right. They're not going to happen this summer. On the other hand, we have fisheries and different kinds of seasonal work that absolutely brings lots of people. I know that's something people are worried about is these fishing communities Mm -hmm. and, Mm -hmm. you know, salmon packaging uh, canneries. Right. And a lot of people come from out of state for that. They Mm do. And they're typically in areas where there's not a huge medical infrastructure. Right. Mm -hmm. So if they did have an outbreak, it would spread quickly and they would not Mm -hmm. have what they needed to provide care for those people. So I know there's still some sticky areas, but you know, I'm cautiously optimistic too. I feel like, um, you know, we're seeing a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel and Mm -hmm. I'm trusting the people in authority to make good decisions and we'll just have to take our own personal decisions as they come. Right now, we don't really have any to make. My husband has had to go into work a couple of times. Today's probably the most extensive day that he's had of going into the office, having a conference call, but they're social distancing Mm -hmm. and sanitizing. So yeah, yeah. So I'd, I'd, I'd say it's good news overall. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I forgot to pull up our um, 
just for fun question, but let me go find where that is. Yeah. That, that has I, been fun to go through. I think I'm getting better at spur of the moment <laughs> questions. Because, You'll be ready for a job interview in no time. <laughs> right? <I'm, laughs> my kids, it's kind of a running joke. My kids are constantly trying to get me a job for whatever reason. I don't know why. Oh, really? All, we'll be at McDonald's and they'll be like, look, McDonald's is hiring. Or, uh-huh. Starbucks. You like Starbucks. Why don't you work at Starbucks, mom? I'm like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> we don't need you to take care of us, to drop us off at school. To keep, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You guys can fend for yourselves. You can create, yeah, food, clothing, all the other things <laughs> that probably they should be able to take care of by now. So maybe it would yeah. be a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. All right. All right. So, just for fun. For the rest of quarantine, you may only use internet for an hour a day what do you do okay hmm i gotta think about that internet for one hour a day so that includes everything that includes it includes everything anything you stream listen to so does it have to be the same thing every day uh probably but what are you thinking like are you gonna have a rotation (laughs) Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I use it for COVID <laughs> conversations and edits and uploads. Tuesdays and I like Thursdays. That <laughs> Tuesdays and Thursdays, my kids get to do schoolwork, but just a little. No, just a little. <laughs> yeah, hour a day for, yeah, divided between three kids. I think that's totally that's fine. fine. Is it me only, though? Only I only? Yeah, let's so go they, ahead and make it just about, for you. Okay. Yeah. They don't need um, their school. So if it had to be like every day I had to do the same thing, I would, I would definitely like, we would probably have to shorten our COVID conversation, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. we totally do that. I wouldn't give that yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's say 30 minutes for podcast related stuff. And I, mm-hmm. we'd have to really, you know, some days maybe it would be a recording. Some days it would be right emails or blogs yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, so I've got 30 minutes left. Gotta be quick. Uh, I would have to say 30 minutes for like family. Well, but see, I don't have to do internet to talk to family, but I like seeing them. So Mm -hmm. let's say five minutes a day for social media, 25 minutes a day for like being able to connect with far away people. Oh, family, like mostly family. Yeah, yeah. Let's do that. I don't like doing, which is mean for me to say now, as we're doing a face-to-face chat, you're really the only person that I regularly will do face-to-face as opposed to just talk on the phone. That's always easier for me. I, I do not care for face-to-face stuff. I, I don't even like seeing myself half the time that we're talking. I have myself uh-huh. locked yeah, out covered. <laughs> by whatever we're doing, uh-huh. our script or the, yeah, or right. the COVID devotional or whatever, because I don't like seeing myself and it kind of, it like, yeah, I don't like it. And so when oh. I'm talking to people from on Skype or something, I always mm-hmm. feel self-conscious. I'm like, uh-huh. oh, my neck is really sagging <laughs> or I've got bags under my eyes. How do I angle this better? So yeah, that's I'm right. not really focusing on the people. So yeah. I spend half the time trying to, but for the kids, they like it. And the grandparents oh, sure. like yeah. seeing the kids. So I typically will sense. just put, put the thing outwards, like flip the camera around and then show them what the kids are doing and have the kids. Oh, cute. And stuff. But yeah, I, I'm with you. I prefer, I'm not even good at phone. I've always uh-huh. been, even before face-to-face was possible, mm-hmm. I I was always bad with, with phone calls. I mean, mm-hmm. you and I talk pretty regularly, yeah. um, but I don't know what it is. I, I have like a phone phobia. I don't, I don't know what it is. I don't I, like calling people that I don't know. I don't like making business calls. I'm, I like social calls. I like just chatting with somebody while I'm, you know, tidying up the house or things like that. But yeah, I don't like having to call and make appointments or that kind of thing. Yeah. I'll do it, but yeah, don't love it. No. So, okay. So for me, for an hour a day, I would definitely keep up this. And I've been doing more videos for like my reader group and my author group. I'd probably just keep up those and I would spend, this is kind of cheating, but I would spend like two to five minutes of it just downloading audiobooks or podcasts that I can listen to later. 
Oh, that's that's true because you definitely don't need internet to stream like podcasts. You can mm -hmm. download them. That's yeah. a good idea. I might or steal even, that and steal yeah. some time from one of my other things. Like I have Endgame downloaded on my phone from the Amazon Prime app so I can watch it without, I mean, it's on the phone. So how fun is that? But it's still better than nothing. Better than nothing. <laughs> yeah, hey, yeah. desperate times call exactly. for desperate measures. <laughs> well, I've been checking social media a lot. I, I think I told you guys that I was, that we're considering getting a puppy, um, mm -hmm. that there's a breeder that, um, that we knew of that is, that has bred, um, a lab, uh, the, there's a litter of black and yellow labs that, um, should be born any day. The dog's due date is wow. Thursday. So we're sixth on the waiting list and who knows what size the litter will be. I mean, right, a lot of right. times it's five and depending mm -hmm. on the color, some want yellow, some want black. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we'll see. And we'll just wait till the fall and the fall might be better timing anyway, if we don't get a dog this time around. Um, but it's still just kind of a fun thing to look forward to her having the babies. We did a family pool on what day the dog, the dog would have the yeah, babies and that's cute. how many in the litter and what uh -huh. colors they were going to be. And so that's fun. The funniest thing was my, uh, so my oldest who's 14 said, um, we were trying to decide on the prize. He's all about incentives. And oh, funny. so he was, I said, what, sh what should the prize be for the person? You know, whether we get the dog or not, whether they have right, three, right. three puppies or not, or 20, mm -hmm. whoever gets the closest, we should come up with a family prize. And so my oldest said, I think the prize should be that if we get the puppy, that that person gets exempt for a certain amount of time from picking up puppy poop. Oh, that is a really good incentive. Well, then my youngest, my six-year-old daughter pipes in very, just totally innocently. She was like, uh, but I think getting to pick up the puppy's poo should be the prize. <laughs> You cut out. I didn't hear the punchline. She punch said, like, I think that is hilarious. It up is what? Talk about timing. I think that picking up the puppy's poo should be the prize. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Says the girl who's obviously never had a puppy or what? <laughs> no, we, we have dog sat for two people. Right? And yeah. when those dogs come, she is the one that really? takes care of the dogs. She Aww. feeds them. She's always the one to be like, is it time to feed the dog? She goes out, she takes the poo thing. She takes the Good little her. bags, picks up the poo. Oh. She loves caring for animals. So that's super she was, cute. She was totally serious. Now that is temporary. Let's fast that's forward right. to having the dog and we'll check back with her after about that's three right. weeks of, of puppy poop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, we cleaned the backyard out after the winter. It was pretty gross. Well, that's the thing is we don't have a fenced yard right now. So right, right. We're, we're looking at getting one and mm -hmm. putting it in, but that's going to be a little while. So we right. do not have a fenced yard. So it will be probably walk the dog, pick it up as we go. Mm -hmm. The great thing, this is, I hope this isn't getting too gross, but when we lived in Arizona, it was awesome mm -hmm. because we at one point had two dogs and they would be in the backyard. They'd go to the bathroom and about once a week, we'd do the cleanup and usually mm -hmm. me because at the time the kids were really little. Right. And um, the, the poo got like petrified within days right. because it yeah. was so hot. It was so hot and dry. It was yeah. so easy. And, you know, I remember back in, you know, Maryland or Virginia, mm -hmm. the, you'd have this bag and it would get heavy. It was yep. like, it was like styrofoam or something. You could. Oh, yeah. Bag. I would have never thought about that. But yeah, especially, you know, because we don't really keep up with cleaning the backyard when it's snowy out because first right. of all, it's hard to check through the snow and then it just gets covered anyway. So in the spring, it really is like an hour job. It's probably yeah. like 100 pounds. I don't know if it's that much. I have a hard time gauging, but yeah, it's just mush and gross. Ooh. Yep. Yucky. Yeah. Great Alrighty. conversation. We cover all kinds of stuff in these COVID conversations, don't we? Who knew? Who knew what would come out? No pun intended. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I love it. How are things going for you guys? Well, I should ask, how much time do you have? I'm pretty good. I'm pretty open. Okay. Till okay. about, I think, 2 o'clock is the next kid's scheduled okay. thing. Um, what was I going to ask? I was just going to ask how things are going for you just spiritually and mood-wise and all of that. So I, I have really been so if you had asked me like a year ago or mm -hmm. a couple of months ago really that 
told me this was coming and said, and, and if you had said, what do you think will be your number one struggle? I would have said yeah. probably anxiety and worry. And that has yeah. not been the case. It's been this, I've, I've named it quarantanger. It's like mm. this, you know, I've been quarantangry. I've been like just kind of critical overall. Mm -hmm. And so I've been critical of political people and their decisions, personal mm -hmm. people and their decisions and how they're handling things online. I see stuff and I'm just like, oh, you know, I get kind of catty yeah. in my head. Yeah. And so I've really had to keep control over that. And I feel like lately, I, I, I think I became aware of it pretty quickly, which is awesome. And my husband has kind of, we joke about it, like he'll, I'll, I'll get on a rant about something and he'll be like, you know, when did you become a hater? You used to be like mm -hmm. Pollyanna. So, yeah. mm -hmm. so the good news is I felt like I've kind of turned a corner and I'm starting to, to really get a handle on it. And really like the Holy Spirit is prompting me and giving me like almost immediate um, realization when it's happening. It doesn't mean that I can squash it immediately. But yeah. Like, I even mentioned it last week and then that day something happened and I texted right. you and I was like, the Lord must have known <laughs> that I, yeah. I needed this because, but I know, I, I know that it's happening when it happens. And so mm -hmm. that I is think, helpful. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of like, um, I don't know, like maybe before it was more like it would get started and then it would kind of you know, get worse and worse and worse. Mm -hmm. And now it's more like I get a little bit of a, like a brush fire and I'm able to put it out more quickly and right. at least contain it more quickly. So no, that it, that's great. Yeah. So I so think it's, that's, yeah, it's not really being angry at a specific, it just no. is kind of more likely to get angry at things. Is that yeah, kind of just a critical component to my mm -hmm. just it's where my mind goes my mind is right. automatically critical it even came out it's even come out like when we're watching movies yeah and and something happens where I'm just like ah, come on that's not realistic <laughs> and just uh -huh. even things like that where I never used to be like that as right. much and right. so uh, the other day you know well, I don't know maybe a couple weeks ago but my husband said something about that too he's like it's not fun watching movies with you Aww. when you do that you know when you're doing that and I'm like yeah, yeah I know that's kind of lame so I I think it's I've turned a corner I feel more centered I definitely do feel like I have done more talking about prayer more talking about the bible than actually just sitting down doing bible study mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and having quiet time because I have been falling into the like kids are around all the time and I am um, one of my, the things I struggle with is not setting boundaries very well with mm -hmm. them, doing more than I should for them when they're perfectly capable of doing more. And mm -hmm. I'm growing in that area too. And so one of the boundaries I need to set, I think, is rather than feeling guilty when three kids want me to play something with them or mm -hmm. three kids need something for me to just say, you know what, I'm going to stop and I'm going to sit down and I'm going to pray and read my Bible. I have not yeah. said that to them one time during all mm -hmm. of this, I'll steal away sometimes for a little bit or honestly go to the bathroom or take a shower mm -hmm. and use mm -hmm. that time. Right. So those are the things. That's kind of where I am right now. I think I'm aware of things and moving in a good direction on some things, but you know, overall good. I'm in a good spot. How about you? Yeah. <laughs> that well, was you know, the long funny. answer. No, when you asked or, or when you were talking about telling your kids like mom's praying right now, I realized like I, I've, I go up and down, like I have really amazing days of prayer, like beyond what I've had in, in really years, just in terms of quality time with the Lord. And then I've had days where I've just played Tetris on my phone and, you know, made sure the kids don't starve days. Like I'm, I'm running the whole spectrum, but on the days where I am spending time with the Lord and the kids come in, I find that my response is always not right now. I'm relaxing. And I don't know why that is. I feel uncomfortable saying I am praying right now. Hmm. And so it's kind of strange because my youngest, especially, he'll come in and if he sees that I'm at the computer, then he knows I'm working. But if I'm just sitting in the chair in my office, you know, then he thinks it's, you know, that we can come and play. And sometimes I'll choose to do that. And other times I'll say, no, I'm relaxing when really I am praying. And I don't know why I'm using those words. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that is interesting. And 
because maybe somehow in your mind it is something that they would understand or would be okay or like would legitimize okay well i'm setting this bound or maybe you feel like it's too i don't really know oh, that's interesting it is interesting i'm gonna have to i'm gonna like sit on that and then next time we talk i'm gonna have diagnosed why that is okay okay well the other thing is um i saw something you might have even posted it somebody posted it on facebook and it was this really fun like it was like a chart and it's it's like maybe it was uh Heather Hart, she might have posted. Oh, uh huh. It. it had like a like a an arrow, and it said "Mom's working," and then it was like green light. Um, I'm working on I'm I'm working on something that you can come in on, or I'm I'm or I'm oh I know I'm in a meeting, but it's with somebody that you know, so you can come in and say feel free okay. to come in and say hi. Right. And right. then like the next color, I don't even remember blue was you know uh, take a minute. Uh, come in quietly mm -hmm. if you need something and put your hand on my shoulder. And the next one was, yeah. you know, don't come in unless it's an emergency. And I think the last one was, if you come in, you're going to have an emergency or you're going to be on fire or <laughs> if it's not an emergency. Now it's going to be, yeah, you're <laughs> going to have it. to deal with, you know, you're going to be on fire or have a broken bone if you come in right now. No. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. I don't know. It was just a funny, but it was like a, a sliding chart where it had like the little arrow that you could put next to what it was, but you could yeah. have, I'm praying that could be mm -hmm. one of your ones mm -hmm. that you could just, yeah. you, know, you don't have to say it. Just put it on the chart. Yeah. <laughs> Hi kitty. Is that kitty? Yeah, the main man just came. Let's pause. All righty, we're back. Yes, that was that was Kitty being being our ferocious guard dog. Good um, dog, Kitty. Way <laughs> to protect the family. That's right. The the mailman incredibly did not murder us all. So good news. <laughs> Thank goodness. At least she was there to chase him off. That's right. That's right. What were we talking? Oh, the um, yeah, families and being on call. So I was actually on yes. call with another author. <laughs> His wife crawled in the background behind him, thinking she was off the screen in order to get him a cup of water. It was super cute. I didn't say anything, but she's just crawling in there and then she just slips her glass of water on his table. It was very cute. That is hilarious. Oh my gosh. It really was. I'm trying to think of when that, some, one of my kids did something like that when one of the other kids is on a Zoom call. I think uh -huh. it was my middle one was like mm -hmm. crawling on the ground to get something. And uh -huh. I think he was out of the screen. That is funny though. The wife, like that's yeah. hilarious. That <laughs> is funny. hilarious. Yeah. You know what I appreciate those? Cause like I do calls like this all the time. You know, you and I do calls. I do a lot of video recordings for the students in my author classes. I do some one-on-one -on -one coaching. And, but what I find now is I'm even more relaxed because our kids are home pandemic or not. Right. And so, you know, there is going to be some noise going on and I just feel so much more relaxed right now because yes. everybody understands what it's like to have noise in the background. Whereas, you know, in a typical scenario, I've never, you know, I work with people who work from home and things like that. So I've never had it be like, why in the world does she have, you know, kids being loud in the background? Although once I was on a call with this guy, he was the head of this, um, like it, it was kind of this high up human rights thing in DC. Like it was kind of a big deal type call. Mm -hmm. And this is back when we were living really rural. And all of a sudden he says, is that a goat I hear in the background? Because <laughs> our goat was just being super loud. Do you remember when you used to record and you would hear my rooster? Yes, that was fun. That was definitely fun. Yeah, I kind of miss having the chickens. Yeah, I miss the chicken stories. I mean, you said they're like dogs. I mean, they are like, they have personalities and they like. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, you can definitely see personalities coming out of them. You like, you know, we all had our favorites, things mm -hmm. like that. Some are cuddly, some aren't. One of them would do this funny thing. They have um, kind of like a, a submission thing where they get down really low <laughs> and kind of puff out their wings and then they like stomp their feet. So it kind of looks like they're wobbling. Yeah. And I had one who like every time they saw me come by, they would do it. It was really funny. And so then you'd like give her their back a little scratch. It was pretty fun. Oh, that's kind of neat. Yeah. 
but they're a lot of work too. So there's that. <laughs> yeah, there's that. The, I'm, and here it's different because the climate, you know, it's hard to have yeah, animals It's hard to keep them through the winter and round. they don't really, yeah. it's really hard to keep them laying all winter long. Mm -hmm. And so it really doesn't become super cost effective. If, you know, if you're only keeping them for eggs, you yeah. have to kind of hit like a, a perfect set of circumstances for them to continue laying all winter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, you know, fun. I'm so glad we got to do it. Well, I guess we can jump into our devotional time if you're I think ready we should. for that. Um, I am so ready. You are ready. Oh, before we jump in, can I tell you the cutest, not the cutest, just like the most feel-good video I've seen this past week? Yes. It is the actor who plays Samwise Gamgee yes. reading the dialogue about, do you remember in Lord of the Rings where like he and Frodo are kind of asking why these bad things are happening. And mm. it's like, you never know why the bad things are happening. You just have to make the most of, you know, something or other. It was really sweet. And he recorded it specifically, like, for people going through the pandemic. It was really, really just, it was cute and encouraging and well-timed. That is really cool. We actually watched the Lord of the Ring. We did The Hobbit first the mm -hmm. Hobbit trilogy movies and then the lord of the rings and i actually mentioned i was like i, I mentioned something about the um the book crush that you had on yeah Sam Wise. Sam. <laughs> i said yeah did you guys know and so yeah i, I was like yeah did you guys know that that alana actually oh uh, so am i gonna get Sam teased Wise? by your kids the next no, time they see me <laughs> but i just thought you know i said you know he's a great character we were just talking about how cool yeah. he was i said yeah he alana is. actually like had a book mm -hmm. crush on him and my kids are like, what's a book crush? And so then we had to pause, <laughs> yeah, right, explain right. what that was. But anyway, Sam, but that part, I just remember really hit home because it was like, mm -hmm. it was like they were speaking to us now, you know? It and really it, was. It was it cool. Was pretty cool. So yeah. I'll have to look so that go find, up. It's, it's like all of a minute and a half, but so timely. Oh, that's mm -hmm. really neat. Yeah. It was uh, neat. I have been watching a lot of feel good, like, clips or memes mm -hmm. or whatever videos mm -hmm. that's um, important for that yeah i think it is too all right so today as promised is a uh, prayer for the homeless you have oh, mentioned right. that before <laughs> as definitely something we need to now one huge praise i would say is they were announcing yesterday during the governor's address was it the governor it might have been mayor like not the mayor but whoever's in charge of the of the of anchorage Okay. Um, was giving like their weekly update and they were mm -hmm. saying that they actually are going to have to reassess the homeless um, facilities. So they have used a couple of the um, hockey rinks actually. Right. So like the, like Ben Boki and the Sullivan center um, that are right next to each other. They have opened those up for homeless shelters and quarantine facilities for people that don't have homes that need a place mm -hmm. to stay to be observed or to be mm -hmm. in quarantine if they're COVID positive. And they've realized that they have too much, like they have too much space mm -hmm. for, so they are actually considering reassessing the space that they need and reducing or moving to somewhere else that, you know, I don't know. I just thought that sounds hey, positive. What yeah. a great problem to have. And granted, this isn't mm -hmm. over there, you know, there could be resurgences, but the fact mm -hmm. is that, that they, overestimated the amount of space they were going to need. And that's a good thing. And through this, good. there has been a real push for like in the um, parking area, the parking lot of these places, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they are having, they have consultants there to help people get hooked up with assistance to get into permanent housing. So they're oh, actually wonderful. like, so they're kind of addressing more of the root yeah, issues. which they feel like they have to in order to move yeah. forward and and way you know. to go Anchorage. Yeah, because yeah. I know the homeless issue there. It's a it's a very big problem. You know, on a scale that I think many cities the size of Anchorage wouldn't have to deal with. I don't know that for a fact, but it's yeah, it's a big problem. Yeah. So anyway. all righty, well, let's pray for the homeless. All right. Well, Genesis sixteen thirteen says. Um, she gave this name to the, you know, I'm going to read, I'm going to read the story. This is a story of Hagar. So I'm going to go to Genesis 16 and just read the context. So is this story time? Do we get to pull out our little carpet squares? Yes. It's I'm story so time, children. Get out your carpet squares. <laughs> Teacher, pick, she's poking me. Pick a color. 
<laughs> Sit down and be quiet. Oh, that's no. more like it. <laughs> that's homeschool preschool edition. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Okay. So this is Genesis 16. Oops. I went to Genesis 13. No wonder that's the wrong story. Okay. Teacher got it wrong. All right. Genesis 16. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, had borne him no children, but she had an Egyptian slave named Hagar. So she said to Abram, the Lord has kept me from having children. Go sleep with my slave. Perhaps I can build a family through her. Abram agreed to what Sarai said. So after Abram had been living in Canaan 10 years, Sarai took Sarai, his wife, took her Egyptian slave Hagar and gave her to her husband to be his wife. He slept with Hagar and she conceived. When she knew she was pregnant, she began to despise her mistress. And I don't know what that means exactly, but I'm guessing she probably not only despised the mistress, but kind of felt better than her and maybe mistreated That's her. That's what I picture too. Like she put on airs, you know, yep. look at me. I can give Abraham a, yep. or Abram at the time. I can give him a kid. You can't. Yeah. Yeah. Then Sarai said to Abram, you are responsible for the wrong I'm suffering. I put my slave in your arms, and now that she knows she's pregnant, she despises me. May the Lord judge between you and me. Your slave is in your hands, Abram said. Do with her whatever you think best. Then Sarai mistreated Hagar, so she fled from her. I also wonder what that meant. Like, what was the extent of the mistreatment? Did she beat her within an inch of her life, or mm -hmm. did she just act mean to her? We don't know. But right, we right. do know that she felt endangered and had to flee from Sarai. Mm-hmm. So then this is the good part. The angel of the Lord found Hagar near a spring in the desert. It was the spring that is beside the road to Shur. And he said, Hagar, slave of Sarai, where have you come from and where are you going? I'm running away from my mistress, Sarai, she answered. Then the angel of the Lord told her, go back to your mistress and submit to her. The angel added, I will increase your descendants so much that they will be too numerous to count. The angel of the Lord also said to her, you are now pregnant and you will give birth to a son. You shall name him Ishmael for the Lord has heard of your misery. He will become, he will be a wild donkey of a man. His hand will be against everyone and everyone's hand against him. And he will live in hostility toward all his brothers. I guess this isn't the good part exactly, but mm -hmm. this is the part I'm, I'm getting at though. She gave this name to the Lord who spoke to her. You are the God who sees me. And, um, I have now seen the one who sees me. That is why the well was called Beer Lahai Roy. And it is still there between Kadesh and Bered. So Beer Lahai Roy means well of the living one who sees me. And so I have this verse. She gave this name to the Lord who spoke to her. You are the God who sees me. For she said, I've now seen the one who sees me. Here's Hagar. She's not a legitimate uh, person in the line, in the lineage of God's people. Mm -hmm. She's been, you know, yeah, she did wrong thing. She, she sinned against her, her mistress. She had, you know, haughtiness and pride and whatever else. And she kind of made her own bed, but she was, mm -hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to stop you right there. Jamie. Oh, okay. <laughs> I okay. think the disdaining, disdaining her mistress, we can blame that on her, but the other stuff, you know, she never asked to sleep with Abram, you know, no, was, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. No. I mean like, being mean to Sarai caused right. Sarai to react to her. Now we don't know. Sarai might have been mean to her anyway. Yeah, but no, yeah. she did. She, yeah, but she did not choose. To I think. Her. Yeah, I think all we can put on Hagar is disdaining her mistress and right. you know rubbing it in her face. I'm pregnant. You're not. Right. To and me, that's not a big enough crime to end up you know cast out. No, no, it's, it's not. And so yeah. she was. She was homeless basically, and just out there, you know. And God. God saw her. She didn't have to be part of God's plan for Israel, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but she recognized that she was seen. And so I am not in any way making a parallel to homeless people that they've made their bed. I'm just saying for mm -hmm. all of us, you know, we have all done wrong things and, and no mat, no sin or wrongdoing in our past prevents us from being seen by God and provided for. And so I just, I, I love the fact that, um, that God sees those yeah. that don't expect to be seen. And so I exactly think the homeless mm -hmm. population, um, a friend of mine gave me a book to read called the invisible and it's about homelessness and oh, yeah. basically how, you know, a lot of times we go about our day, we see people on the street and, and we do sometimes, either intentionally or unintentionally disregard them. 
Um, oh, yeah. Well, I remember I grew up and we'd go into San Francisco. We live like an hour away. So, you know, several times a year we'd go into San Francisco. And I was taught as a kid, don't make eye contact, right. you know, and it was considered a safety issue. And, and you know, I, I don't think that that's necessarily wrong. Like some people, I don't know, I don't want to get too into it, but that was for sure what we were taught growing up is you don't make eye contact. And yeah, if you're in a situation where people are refusing to even look at you, you're very much, you're the definition of unseen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I know that, that God sees. And so that, yeah. that was the point that I really wanted to take away from How this. encouraging. Yeah. Um, so obviously homeless people are even more vulnerable during this time than a lot of people. It's harder for them to isolate. Um, mm -hmm. It's probably less desirable for them to isolate because I think there is a comfort for some people that are living on the streets. Um, even those that choose not to go to shelters. Mm -hmm. for different reasons, there's comfort in community. And so it's mm -hmm. probably got to be really hard when you're homeless yeah. to isolate. So um, yeah, let, let's pray. Let's do it. Loving Father, we praise you for being Elroy, the God who sees. Not a single person is capable of escaping your gaze and your unending love. We confess that we ourselves sometimes overlook the poorest and most needy in our world either being indifferent or critical or hardened toward their situation. Give us pure hearts, removing anything that would keep us from seeing these people through your eyes. We pray for those who are sick, that you would help them to be identified and brought to places where they can be isolated and treated until they're well. For those who need shelter, we pray that you would provide safe, clean housing where they can sleep and be fed without worrying about being exposed to illness. We lift up the shelters and organizations who provide help for homeless populations. Provide generous donors to keep them running and even to expand during this time when additional space is necessary for hygienic containment of COVID-19. We pray for the homeless children for whom school had been a refuge. Provide for them in every way, Lord. Place people in their lives to bring joy and love and fellowship and normalcy. Give them safe places to sleep and eat. Reveal yourself to these children and to all who find themselves homeless. Let them see El Roy, the God who sees. Move the body of Christ to be your hands and your feet to display your love to them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, thank you, Jamie. Thank you, God, for keeping us all safe and well. And thank you guys for listening. And we'll talk to you soon.